property. Give my consent for that. Um, I wanna call this meeting to order. We're gonna begin with the citizenship award. Excellent. Um, v, I think you're on here, aren't you? She is. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we are happy that V Doan is our citizen, citizenship award winner this month. V is an amazing part of the Vinita Elementary community and is continually looking for ways to make herself and her community better. During virtual learning last year, she would often attend extra academic sessions in order to have a better understanding of subject matter or just to help her peers. She attended every virtual family night and participated eagerly in each. This fall, she and a fifth grade peer were chosen by their teacher to learn the protocol for raising the American and state of Oregon flags in front of our school each morning. V and her partner showed up in the office daily to take on this important duty. V is dependable, kind, eager to learn, and is an important part of our Benita Elementary family. Her teacher writes that V consistently participates and contributes greatly to class discussions. She is eager to help other students and has been flexible with each partner she has had so far this year. V models responsibility, respect, self-control, and a growth mindset throughout the day and sets a great example for her peers. Way to go, V. Congratulations. That's awesome. Congratulations, V. Congratulations. Yes. Thank Glad you. It's been an honor. She thought she was in trouble. <laughs> no. I was like, um. She doesn't know. I wondered. I saw her face. I wondered. Um, I've had the, the privilege know, of knowing so me since kindergarten, and and, uh, and she absolutely deserves this and embodies everything that, you know, we as a district want out there in the world. So good job, V. Good job. Good job, Dad. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. It's all hers, not us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You are you are welcome to stay and you are also welcome to go if you would like. Um, normally if we were in person, we would have you lead us in the in the flag salute, but we don't do those in virtual meetings. So uh, congratulations. Thank you so much for everything that you uh, bring to our community of learners at uh, VES. And you're gonna be in middle school next year is that correct yeah that's that's it's going to be awesome to have you there and to see what you do next so thanks so much thank you appreciate everything thank you take care bye 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 v. bye <laughs> oh she's such a sweetheart awesome okay michelle i know we had some public comment Yes, we had one letter submitted from Brianna Carney. Dear Mr. Carpenter and school board members, I am inclined to bring to your attention the definition of the word mandate, noun, one, an authoritative command or instruction, two, a command or authorization given by a political electorate to the winner of an election. I remind you all that a mandate is not a law. It is also not an action word, it is a noun. Under this definition, a mandate can change from one elected official to another. A vaccine cannot. It cannot be undone by any elected, current, or future official once it's injected into your body. It is this is and should remain a decision between self and doctor. Involving the school with his personal health choice is wrong. The school should not play politics with health choices. The school is not a medical facility, nor is the district office. What you're doing to the students, staff, coaches, aides, parents, and volunteers is wrong. Denying entrance into the school for not having a COVID-19 vaccine is wrong. Forcing unvaccinated teachers and staff out is wrong, especially when they are willing to follow other protocols. This becomes a question about control, not about health. In the past, one did not have to prove vaccination status for other vaccines, such as flu, chickenpox, et cetera, before entering the school. To deny parents who are unvaccinated, specifically against COVID, access into the school to join class events, eat lunch with their own child, admire student art in the hallways, join field trips or volunteer in any way is deplorable. Those children inside the school walls are our children, not the district's children. Not to mention those school classrooms and hallways are funded and paid for by our tax money. We as the parents to the children being taught inside the Fernridge school system 
have a right to access and visit the school of our, inside of our school. It is immoral and illegal to deny parents entrance into our public schoolhouse. Exemptions, both medical and religious, should be honored as they have in the past. The school thrives on the motto of no discrimination based on race, color, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, marital status, religion, disability, or age. You are actively discriminated against your current staff and employees by denying these exemptions. You also violate your own FRSD equity statement to ensure each student can follow their own path to reach their full potential without fear, threat, humiliation, danger, or disregard. You are failing the students at every point above. Students cannot reach their full potential when great, fully qualified teachers are replaced with undereducated and far less qualified, underexperienced people. The students are in constant fear, threatened and in some case punished for not complying daily with the guidelines regarding mask policies. They are put in danger daily with lack of oxygen and lack of education due to these mandates. And they are absolutely disregarded when their words and feelings are thrown away when they oppose the district's removal of their favorite teachers. You have let the student body down. You've let me as a parent down. You've let your staff down, who have given their all and more to you in this district. Follow your own motto, follow your own equity statement, accept these exemptions, period. It should also be noted that our community and nation have changed drastically since you were elected into your current positions on the school board. The opinions and needs of our community have changed. This needs to be recognized. Please do not let your personal beliefs outweigh my voice and others who speak out in disagreement with your decisions. Our voices matter, our needs matter, our health choices should stay our own. You are creating division within our community instead of bringing us together during these trying times. Thank you for your time, Brianna Carney. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and that was it. There were no other public comment. Okay. Um, if we could scroll down, moving on to monthly items. We have the approval of board minutes from last month. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, October 18th uh, minutes as written. A uh, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, are there any discussion? Is there any discussion? No. All right, uh, call to a vote. All in favor, Mark? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Jackie? Aye. Barb? Aye. Tiana says aye. Motion carries five to zero. Minutes are approved. Next item is the enrollment report with Quana. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is our enrollment as of November 1st. We are down 68 students or 5% from what we projected in our budget. And we are down 26 students or 2% um, from the same time last year. We're um, just monitoring it and um, the end of this month, beginning of December, um, Gary and I will um, begin looking at projections for 22-23. Okay. Uh, this does not require board action, I believe. I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, all right, then I think you are next. No questions on yeah. that from anybody? All right, moving forward, you are next with the budget calendar. All right, so this is the proposed 22-23 budget calendar with the first meeting being held on Tuesday, April 26th. Uh, the second meeting, which is when the budget message is delivered is Tuesday, May 24th. I uh, just wanna make sure there's no conflicts with anyone. Not at this point. I, Our detail, I'm, right? The ways away. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that you checked with um, the high school about the awards ceremony. 
I did check their calendar and there's nothing scheduled on the calendar as of right now for okay. either of those days. Well, then I move that we accept the 2022-23 uh, 20, proposed budget calendar. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any, is there any discussion? Scrolling through, hearing none, seeing none, uh, I call a vote. Mark? Aye. Jackie? Sorry, I couldn't unmute. <laughs> Aye. Barbara? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Tiana says aye. Uh, budget calendar is approved, five to zero. Fiscal year 2022-2023. Is that, that's really, <laughs> gosh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, having a, a, a moment. I'm not 50 for a couple more years, but my goodness, it sure seems to just be flying by. Um, all right, so the budget calendar we approved and then you have the financial report and the general yeah. fund, okay. Yeah. These are the financials as of October 31st. We've received 29% of our revenue and we've spent 19% of our operating expenditures. Um, next, or actually by the end of this month, we should start receiving uh, property taxes. So our revenue will increase quite a bit um, starting at the end of this month. Um, and property tax tables were just released and it looks like it, the assessed values increased by about 4%, which I think we projected three and a half in our budget. So that's pretty close. Um, Let's see, what else was that? I was also going to mention that our beginning fund balance is not recorded yet. You will see um, that's due to the auditors still finishing up stuff. They're running very slow this year because they're having to do everything virtually. And so they're not quite on time with that. Um, let's see, I think that was all I had to go over unless somebody has questions. Any questions? Not, not at this time. All right, and uh, we need a I'm motion. Make a motion to approve the October 31st financial report. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye, Mark. Aye. Jackie? Aye. Barb? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Tiana says aye. Motion passes. Uh, budget or uh, financial report is approved five to zero. The superintendent's report. Take it away, Gary. Okay, I'll be quick. Just a couple topics to share, discuss. <laughs> had a meeting with OD last week, about an hour and a half uh, presentation from Colt. Uh, several things, uh, lots he shared, the things that I want to pass along um, and just kind of make sure on your radar is that I could see within a few uh, weeks, the quarantine time that were required for students um, being reduced. Uh, so that would be helpful. Uh, to us. Uh, something else that may be coming in, in the weeks ahead would be a test to stay option, uh, meaning I was a close contact and now the district has enough tests. We can test student X every day uh, and they could continue to come to school. Um, the reduction and or elimination of masking requirements uh, sounds like that once everybody uh, in school age kids, uh, five and above, have had the opportunity to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated, which will be happening around Christmas break, um, that uh, in the new year, they could be looking at reducing uh, masking requirements, possibly first starting with outside 
Um, and uh, then going from there. So again, down the road, uh, last thing I wanted to share, he talked about, you know, I know it's on parents' minds a lot is vaccination requirement for students. Um, at the state level, I think that is a possibility. Uh, however, everything that I've heard, the two things, one, it probably won't occur this school year, at least six months out, which probably gets us into 22, 23. And then two, it would be added to the vaccination list, just like all other vaccinations, polio, et cetera. And um, unlike medical or religious exceptions, parents have what's called a personal exception to those, uh, requires them to watch a video, sign a form, and if they so inclined, um, could essentially opt out uh, of the vaccination requirement. Uh, so that was the some of the highlights from the OD meeting I wanted to share. I wanted to share that our SIA quarter one report um, that Ms. Marshall uh, submitted has been approved by ODE. So we're good to go. We're on track for our 21-22 uh, expenditures in the SIA uh, account. Um, we continue to work on our updated volunteer visitor practices and policies. Um, we've been bouncing around a document, continuing to adjust. I can see as we approach winter break, um, some significant changes uh, around that. Again, one of the main metrics we're waiting for is that every kid, an eight-year-old in you know, third grade will have had the opportunity to be vaccinated, uh, which will occur uh, if they want that uh, by winter break. So um, I could see as we get into January, uh, some of our practices there, as we get it refined a little bit more, I, I would, uh, I'll kind of get it on Michelle's radar right now. Um, we'll probably have an update on this topic to get the board's feedback at our December uh, board meeting. And then lastly, I wanted to get a quick uh, staff thank you. You know, a lot of districts around Lane County have necessitated taking additional days off, uh, impacting parents tremendously. Um, you know, it's a big help for our staff who are stressed, overworked, et cetera, uh, but it's a big impact to students uh, negatively. And we have not yet had to do that. Most districts in Lane County, just to kind of catch their breath, took Friday off. Um, we did not have to do that. Um, several districts around Lane County have added anywhere from two to six additional uh, days off between now and the end of the year. Uh, and we've got a lot of staff uh, working hard when we have days where with a couple people out that are sick or maybe they're in some kind of professional development training. We have administrators and you know their fellow teaching peers stepping up to ensure that that isn't something that we have to do or have had to do to this point. And I just wanted to say thank you to all our staff that have helped make that happen. And that is all I have in the superintendent's report for today. Thank you, Gary. Um, Michelle Marshall, extra thank you for submitting a report that was approved. That's not uh, short of magic. So I, I appreciate all your hard work. I know that a lot went into that. Uh, thank you. I'll keep you posted when the SIA or the ESSER stuff goes through. That'll, that'll be big too. You keep me posted. Let me know if you need a coffee delivery. I, I can make things happen. So, um, all right. And then, thank you, Gary. Are there any questions or discussion about the superintendent's report before we move forward? All right. I think that you're also going to talk to us about Division 22. Is that correct? Correct. So um, Division 22 used to be something that occurred a little later in the year. This is the first year now they're doing this in the fall and it's for the uh, prior year. Um, last year Division 22 was altered because of the uniqueness of the year. Instead of there being 50 some odd um, items that we need to uh, submit to ODE and say we're in compliance with it was, I want to say it was 18 or 20 or something. Anyways, we're back to normal times. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to scroll through this uh, PowerPoint real quick, just to give you a quick summary. This is, uh, as we said, Division 22. It signals, um, it's a report that signals our commitment to providing quality education to our students. Uh, Division 22 standards articulate the floor uh, to be provided to students, not the ceiling. Uh, and the assurances process offers an opportunity for districts not in compliance which has occurred for every district in, in some issue 
uh, along the way to uh, rectify that and get in compliance for future years. Uh, as I mentioned, there's been some changes. The timeline is the big one. It used to occur in February, it got moved to November. Uh, the rule states that assurances are made for the preceding year. So this is for last year, the 2021 school year. Um, and we're required to use the, the same template. Uh, and a little bit later, I'll show you where that's posted on our website. Let's see, uh, all changes in and waivers to Division 22 standards for the 2021 school year are set out in that OAR. Uh, we haven't needed to ask for any waivers. Um, however, the state identified three areas that, that where they are a waiving requirements and they're uh, listed there. Let's see. I don't know that there's too much we need to go there, but if, if you'd like this PowerPoint, Michelle can send it to you and you could um, check out uh, the link. The three OARs are new uh, items in the assurances this year, annual reporting on restraint and seclusion and every student's belong, uh, assurance and suicide prevention plan. Uh, three steps in the Division 22 assurance process. Um, we, it all happens in November and tonight after the meeting, I will be submitting and it's due by November 15th, which happens to be today. So we're sliding in. Um, the main thing to note is that in Fern Ridge, we're compliant in all areas. Uh, besides board policy that addresses many of the Division 22 standards, we have a dedicated location on our website where the public can view, uh, can review uh, key plans on a wide range of topics. And again, as soon as we're done with this, I'll have Michelle jump there real quick. Uh, looking ahead, I don't see any practice or policy that'll take us out of compliance um, for this school year, which we'll be doing in the fall of 2022. And just to review, most of our report things from the home page, we go down there, it says district and state reports. There's a wide range of things there, but down a little bit, uh, about the seventh bullet or so, Division 22 report see the last two years, there's this year's report. Um, go ahead and click on that, let's open it up. Again, every district uses is to use the same format. If we take the first one there, uh, ready school safe learners. So that's all the safety protocols around um, COVID, et cetera. Yes, we're in compliance. If we weren't in compliance in some area, we need to say why and then have some plan uh, to get in compliance for next year's report. If you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see, um, go ahead and keep going to where I've entered some links. Yeah, so there's a good example right there, or some of these pages. Um, there's requirements around career education, human sexuality and education, comp uh, comprehensive school counseling plan, et cetera. And, and we are in compliance with those. And there's a little extra step. I've just put the link uh, where folks can find those plans um, that help guide our processes here in our district. So that's Division 22. Like I said, we're in compliance, and as soon as the meeting's over, I will be submitting that to ODE. I was I was waiting for a minute for somebody to move us forward, but then I realized that's me. Um, <laughs> I'm still just wrapping my head around all, all of all of all of that, and uh, and the fact that we're in compliance, which is good. Um, the first reading of proposed policy updates. I know you sent these out to everyone, but we'll take a look at them anyway. And these are, Gary, can you give us just the, the blurb about where these are coming from? Sure, basically a few months ago, not sure how many, uh, passed a new rule requirement for districts to do two things. One, beginning January 1st, make all of our board meetings accessible virtually. So even though we plan to go back, uh, hopefully in January, I think, um, to in-person meetings, we'll need to continue going forward uh, to um, provide a virtual option to communities. The second thing it requires us to do, or all school districts to do, is to allow public comment virtually in the same way that we allow public comment in person. So that's what these policies do. We needed to change our practice, um, outlines uh, some guidelines, um, kind of similar to what we're in right now. 
that anybody, if they come in person and want to speak, there's a process to let Michelle know, fill out a little form ahead of time. They don't need to write out exactly what they're gonna say, uh, but just um, you know, let us know that they're gonna speak. And if I'm Gary's at home and I want to participate in the board meeting virtually and speak, same thing, uh, a timeline to submit, let us know that you're gonna speak. Um, and then we'll be able to, um, as I think we've talked about, we hope to next month go to a webinar format. So in a webinar format, it's gonna be a lot easier. The board members, let's say myself, will be on a screen displayed in a big circle, the six or seven of us. Um, and folks that are viewing are kind of off in a waiting area. We don't see all those pictures. But then if, let's say, Susie, she's out watching, but she's submitted to speak, we can bring her into the meeting. She'll be able to speak. Um, another good thing, a way that it helps uh, if we ever have to go back to virtually is you can just vote by raising your hand. Um, you know, we're all six there spread out on the screen. It makes it a lot easier than uh, ver verbalizing it. Again, hopefully we get to go back to in person. That's not uh, um, required, but um, we will. Uh, those, are the, those are the two main things that came out of this uh, requirement. January 1st have to be virtual as an option and January 1st virtual folks need to have the same ability to speak as in-person folks. So that's what these policies address. And so even when we come back in person and we're all in person all the time, we still have people, we have to make it available for people to come in virtually and then the Correct. public comment process has to be the same for both virtually. Correct. We, we could say, okay, we're not allowing public comment, but then we're not allowing it for in-person, we're not allowing it virtual. What we can't say okay. is, um, we're going to allow public comment only in person and not virtual. If we allow it in person and in what form it has to be that same form virtually. Okay. Do we want to open these and look them over together or has everyone had a chance to read them? You, yeah, typically in the first reading, just, I know a couple, uh, Andrea sent a, an edit, a uh, typo that will get fixed. If people had any thoughts after reading them, you could talk about them now or send them to Michelle and we'll have a final reading in December. Are I guess I'd, I'd be most interested if, if the context of the way we're gonna have public comment if, if the board is in agreement with that and okay with kind of that process. I just, yeah, as long as, as long as it, it feel, it doesn't feel like you're spending a, an enormous amount of time preparing for virtual comment, then I'm I'm perfectly fine with all of all of the as it I'm perfectly fine with the policy as it stands. Sounds good. Other thoughts from board members before we move forward? And so it, what's the time frame, Gary, if people have comments or, or um, if board yeah, okay. members have comments or edits on any of those? Sure, you can email uh, uh, Michelle Smith over the next couple of weeks. We'll okay. uh, fine tune, you know, when we, we'd like to just have it uh, finalized before we post the next agenda uh, before right. the December meeting. So just, uh, you know, by I'd say Wednesday before the next board meeting, anybody's got any, any uh, strong opinions on tweaks to get it to us by then. All right, thank you. Moving on to personnel. Uh, licensed employees, resignations, new hires, transfers, and other. Are there just the two? Is there more of a report? Just the two for the licensed and confidential that require board action, and then okay. that non-licensed report that's just for information. And we usually look at that after this though, right? Yeah. Okay. So I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the resignation and retirement of the two individuals as written. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, I call a vote. Mark? Aye. Jackie? There, aye. Andrea? Aye. Barbara? Aye. 
Tiana says aye. Motion passes five to zero. Uh, let's take a look at that non-licensed personnel report. Gary, anything you want to add? Um, no, I don't have anything to add other than we've uh, been able to hire some great people over the last uh, few weeks and slowly getting our uh, our jobs filled. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Michelle, I know we had some late items. Yes, so let me get this to the right screen. Um, tonight, we need to take a motion um, so that the board can submit their vote for position six um, and also for the legislative policy committee position six. These both represent our area and OSBA. All right, I would uh, entertain a motion. I, I move that we vote for Mark Boren uh, for the board of directors position six. And I'll second that. Your motion and a second, any discussion? All right, uh, call a vote. Tiana says aye. Barb? Aye. Jackie? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Mark, do you abstain or are you allowed to vote for yourself? I think I'm allowed to vote, so I do vote for myself. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, all right. So we uh, motion carries five to zero to uh, vote for Mark Boren for the board of directors position. Um, Mark, do you know any either of the individuals that are running for the LPC position? Yeah, I would make a motion to um, uh, vote for Judy Newman for the Legislative Policy Committee. I would agree with that. So we have a motion and a second. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All right, hearing none, I call a vote. Tiana says aye. Mark? Aye. Barbara? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Jackie? Um, I'm going to abstain. Um, I don't know the person and I don't feel comfortable voting for or against. Okay. All right. Motion carries four to one, correct? All right. So uh, it's, four to, it's still four to it's zero. Four to, four to zero. Four to, four to zero. doesn't count as a negative. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. So four to zero. Um, and I'm not taking notes, so I don't have to write all the other stuff. <laughs> Thank goodness for Michelle Smith. I think that almost every day. Not so much on the weekends, I would say, but. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I feel like there was one other thing we were gonna try to address in late. Um, oh, uh, December meeting. We talked in October about holding our meetings through the end of the calendar year uh, virtually and then figuring out what we can do, where we can have it, and um, whether or not it makes sense in January to try to come back together in some kind of a hybrid format since it's required for us to, to offer both now. Um, board members, is that all? Sounding familiar, what we discussed, and good to move forward? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Um, was there anything else, Michelle? Well, hang on a minute. Can we, okay. um, next month, can we discuss what that's going to look like so that we can just put it in place in January? Um, what yes. a hybrid would look like, where we're going to be, and how we're going to, um, when people want to come address the board, how we're gonna regulate that because of COVID. Can we just have a plan review next month so that we know we're gonna get this off the ground by January? <clears throat> yes, in terms yes. Of, of the the issues around space, the issues around um, complying with, with COVID restrictions of how many people and um, 
were you, I don't, I know that it came today or maybe it was late yesterday, but uh, were you able to look at, read through the, the new policies that we're looking at and voting on next month about uh, public comment? Cause that spells some of that out, not so much the COVID specific stuff, but more the process and procedure for that. Yeah, I read, and I actually, I took notes on some of that, um, but I didn't feel like there was anything really at this point I needed to address, but um, I want to move forward on this and I want to know how we're going to do it so that everyone's comfortable. The question I had too for Gary um, is, so if a public comment is limited to 30 minutes, what happens if we have more public comment? What happens to that comment? So I think it talks about it in there, but two things. One, board chair can extend the 30 minutes. I don't know that we'd ever get there, but have that ability. Two, uh, folks could, would just be, they'd be the first people uh, submitted ready for the next board meeting and, and or they could uh, reduce their comments to writing and we'd get them to the board members in email the next day. So let's say potentially we had 15 people sign up to speak for three minutes at a board meeting. Um, something we've never had, but you know that could take up to an hour with three minutes of pop and transitions between people. Typically, what I'd recommend is at 30 minutes, we would cut it off. Five people, uh, they'd be the first five speakers at the next board meeting and whatever they were going to speak on, they could, again, uh, get it to the board members in writing. Well, if, if we have the meetings in the boardroom, will there be a limited amount of uh, people that are allowed in the, meeting, in the boardroom at one time? with yes. the pandemic yeah and more people will be required to wear masks yes okay. as long as you know as long as uh it's a requirement right, in right, the, right. In the state. so um if we knew there was going to be a lot of people at a board meeting we might move to a different spot uh the way they in other districts the way they're doing this is they just have some kind of a <clears throat> person at the door um and uh you know when it gets to the full capacity then um it's closed off uh, if a lot of people are there to speak they could rotate you know so gary's in the meeting he does his three minutes and i'm leaving so that tom can come in and say their three minutes but again i, I don't know that it'll be that big of a problem but we'll be prepared for it what it looks like at the district office and if we if we had a sense there was going to be a larger crowd we just go to a larger space gary okay. with the new um with i'm sorry just clarification on the point that you just made with the new administrative rules and uh, board policy that we're looking at, wouldn't we know by 1 p.m. the day of the board meeting if we had 15 people, for example, that had signed up to speak for, during public comment? Doesn't that give us a little bit of time to? Yeah, that gives us uh, a couple hours. Yeah. I mean, we, we probably, would, we've already posted where the meeting is going to be by then, but it would okay. let us know going into it. Uh, hey, maybe we have 12 people. So we'd really be emphasizing, hey, we really need folks to stick to the three minutes. Um, and well, Michelle and I are going to practice some of this. We'll have a timer that shows on the screen um, and a little bell will go off when the three minutes are up. And if folks have, again, if they, maybe I didn't get to say everything that I wanted to, my, you know, I thought it was going to be three minutes, but it's really five. Um, Again, they could email it to the board. We'll, we'll take their, or if they had it written on a paper, they could hand it to us. So there'll be some contingencies in place, but um, yeah, there, you know, there might be, we might only get nine people have submitted a comment, but we might have 20 people just coming to watch the board meeting. So that would just be a problem. Um, you know, we don't have the space at the district yeah. office for that. We've, we're trying some reconfiguring of tables in there, um, some different things that might help uh, the space, but It'll be a work in progress. I'm sure we can figure it out though. Okay, and we can have some kind of a plan to look at by the next board meeting. Sure, yep. Keep I'll that get on something. the agenda and at least get an update of where, where we're at, what we still need in order to figure that out and have it in place by January. Yep, okay. I can do that. And Gary, I just wanna caution you that um, if Michelle's gonna be the timer, I heard recently she just ran over her watch with her car, so. Ah. Be careful where you put really them. yeah I, that's just a rumor but that's what i heard okay that's good to know okay um also um is there a place on the agenda where we can comment on the um prince Ad, admin reports at all um no i mean there's there's never been a um 
a section in the agenda where um, you know they come regularly and give a report. It's just kind of like a my weekly email that I get to the board. Um, you know, it's just a kind of a courtesy. Here's what's going on in our uh, building. If you wanted to, as a late item, if you had some comments specifically about something you read, you certainly could here. Well, I just wanted you to know um, that I read the Fernridge Middle School report. I read them all, actually. Um, but one of the things that um, interests me was the sixth grade success class that um, Mrs. Johns, Ms. Johnson has put together. And I was wondering, because it's such a hard and difficult transition for kids to make from middle school to high school, if they could integrate that rather than a one-time shot class, is there a way to integrate that throughout their sixth grade year so that they get accustomed to being organized and um, it helps them build a better foundation to be successful in high school? Yeah, I'll have her email. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I know they have a sixth grade success class, like we have a ninth grade one. Um, I would imagine there are things that are integrated through seventh and eighth grade. Uh, so I'll have her, if she has a good description or a syllabus about what, what that occursion looks like, I'll have her share it with you. Michelle, will you make a note about that? And Michelle Marshall was sh shaking her head. Were you, did you know something about that or? Yeah, I, I, the middle school is doing some targeted work with the Wren um, group, the Western Regional Educator Network. And so they've got a $30,000 grant to just work on sixth through eighth grade um, organization skills. So they're, they're doing quite a bit of really good stuff and they made a rubric for binder checks and planners. And um, so I think they're doing a lot of stuff around that right now. That's great. Thank you. All right. Any other late remarks, uh, closing comments or late business? All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Michelle, for running things uh, behind the scenes. Thank you, everybody, for your hard work and your volunteer time. And the meeting is adjourned. Bye. Bye.